Hey everybody, it's Stacy here. Um, I didn't know when that was going to turn on because I have these two controllers and I don't know which one goes to this one or which one goes to the other one or whatever. Anyway, this is a rare and momentous occasion because I'm doing a video and actually showing my face. Um, most of my painting videos I don't. I just do my hands, you know, because uh, y'all aren't tuned in to watch me. Um, but this is going to be a stained glass video, and it's rare and momentous not only because you see my face, but because I actually have my hair fixed and have makeup on. Very rare. <laughs> it just does not happen. But it just so happened that I needed to for something else today, so uh, take it in because uh, it never happens. I mean, I literally walk around in paint cover clothes, no makeup, and my hair up in a ponytail every day. So. Anyway, um, I had the sweetest lady uh, comment on my page, and uh, she requested that I make some more stained glass videos. And I'm totally flattered because I only made a few of them because I looked and saw how many of them there were, and I was like, well, gosh, there's so many, you know, they don't really need mine. I mean, there's lots of good people out here doing them. And I kind of felt insignificant, so I didn't make any more. And uh, this sweet lady messaged me and requested that I make another one. So, um, I asked her what her specific issues were and found those out and I decided the best way to help her is to make a series of videos starting making a piece, a small piece, you know, pretty simple from beginning to end. And um, I'm going to divide it up, of course, because it'll be long, but we're going to start from the very beginning and I'm going to pack as much information into it as I can. Um, starting with making the pattern. That's where we're going to start with. And I use, you know, you can buy this paper from the stained glass businesses, like my friends that own glass castles here in Nacogdoches sell paper for making patterns. I don't want to pay for it. So I get this. It's cardstock. It's from Walmart. And it's a lot cheaper. I don't remember exactly how much it is, but it's a lot cheaper. And this is what I make my patterns out of. I just get it. And then um, I take a little glue stick like this and I glue the pages together to make it whatever size I want. And that's what I use to make my patterns out of. And I make all my own patterns. Um, I have used uh, patterns that I bought, pre-made patterns before, um, and that's fine. You know, it's totally fine. But um, I just like to exercise my own creativity and draw it myself. And so you have to have a way of doing that because the accuracy and everything starts at that point. And if your patterns are not accurate, then you will realize it in later steps down the road. It's like I told the lady that messaged me. Um, if you're having a problem in stained glass at one particular stage, say soldering, your problems are not really at the soldering stage. They really start before that. For instance, like you're cutting or you're grinding or something like that. You may have issues with soldering, like, uh, for instance, she said she was using a cheap soldering iron. Well, that can definitely cause you problems. Cheap soldering irons tend not to get as hot, and they, worse, they tend to uh, fluctuate their temperature. They don't hold a constant temperature. That's a major problem, because when you're melting that solder, it needs to melt evenly and fluidly as you go along. And if your temperature is fluctuating, it's not going to do that. And it can be a problem. But typically, like I said, if you're having a problem at one stage, you need to look ahead at the other stages, the ones before it, and be sure there's not something you're doing wrong. Because she also said she was having trouble getting pieces to fit together nicely. Well, that can be uh, a number of things. It can be because your pattern isn't, you know, right. Um, it can be because your cutting isn't accurate. Or it can be because your grinding is off. Now, um, a lot of that comes down to, well, she asked, do you, um, when you're cutting, do you cut on the inside or the outside of the line? I cut on the inside of the line, and no, I do not use those special scissors that they make for cutting patterns. They have different ones for foil and different ones for uh, lead. I don't use them. I did in the beginning, but then I felt like um, they were kind of a waste of time. As, as long as you draw your pattern accurately and you cut it accurately, I have found that uh, it works fine just to use regular scissors. Just cut right on the line. And then when you're cutting your glass out, 
you're going to be cutting on a line that you drew with a sharpie so it's kind of a fat line and i cut on the inside of that line as much as i can now that's hard to do okay so that's why we have a grinder if you are cutting and your cutting is not up to snuff say you're just practice you know it takes a while to get good at cutting it's a practiced art i mean you really have to work at it and until you do um, the grinder can help you out a lot now uh, when I first started, I didn't have a grinder. Um, I didn't have anything at first, and I didn't use anything, and it was horrible. My pieces did not fit together. Um, I had big, huge gaps everywhere. It just wasn't working. So I got one of those stones. I think they call it like a carbonero stone. It's something that starts with a C. I don't really know, and it doesn't really matter because they don't really help. Um, they, uh, number one, you, you take the piece of glass and you rub the stone against it, okay? It's very hard to do. You will cut the crap out of yourself because many times when you get going, you will miss with your hand and you will accidentally run your hand along that edge of glass. Trust me, I have done it. It happens. It's horrible. Um, like I said, they're very time consuming. They're not accurate. They don't grind enough off. You'll be at it forever and you'll hurt yourself. Okay. Um, honestly, that's the truth. Um, I personally believe that, um, and everything in this video, let me just make my disclaimer, is, is what I have found to be true and what I personally believe. I'm no expert. You know, I didn't write the book. I taught myself. Um, if you want to see some of my work, look at my previous stained glass videos because I showed some of my um, things I have done. I don't have them all out today, but I showed them in that other video. Um, and they're pretty nice. You know, I've worked at it really hard. Um, and I have sought help from other people to discuss things because like I told her, there's going to come a point where you're going to have individual questions. You're going to want to say, look, I'm doing this and this is what's happening. What am I doing wrong? Okay. Um, I had to do that at some point. Um, and I did reach out to experts in the field and ask questions. And I want to tell you that I'm available. If you're working on this and you're just starting out and you have questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. I will get on the phone and talk you through it. I will explain to the best of my ability how I handle whatever problem you're having. You know, I'm totally willing to do that. I love being able to help teach people or help people uh, in their creative endeavors. And there were people there that did that for me. So I totally enjoy doing that. Don't hesitate. I put my email address on most of my videos at the end of them. I'll put it on this one. And I try to put it on most of them. Sometimes I forget. But it's on there. If you want, email me. And I'll give you my phone number. And, you know, we can talk. And that will help a lot. And uh, in the meantime, I just want to start and explain a little bit about the patterns and the tools and then we're going to go from there okay so we got the card stock that's what i use um it's not the only thing maybe not the best thing it's my thing so um the other things you're going to need is you're going to need a ruler a really good ruler and i like you're going to need sharpies the you know just regular sharpies i really like the thin point ones but they never last they just run out and they're expensive so i don't buy them i buy these and i cut on the inside of the fat line okay um for patterns i like these pins that have the multi colors that way if you when you're doing your pattern you're going to trace over part of it now if you want to use that pattern again and you see that it's been traced over in black say if you want to use it again these pins allow you to trace it over in green or red or whatever blue so then you can see your you know present tracing compared to your past ones so you'll know where you're sta where you stand where you are um, that'll make more sense i guess as we go along um you need a cutter i personally like these little pistol grip ones um i started out using the the ones that are like a pencil grip that you hold like this, like a pencil. Um, I like these much better. You put the oil in here. You need to clean this every now and then because it gets gunky. Um, but I think those work the best. Um, you need a pair of uh, these uh, breaking pliers. Um, you can Google them. And you need a pair of these running pliers. These have a curved end. See this? This part is curved, that's the bottom. The bottom part is the curved part. You hold this top part that's straight on the top, okay? That's the way you do that. 
and those are for later, but I just wanted to go over them real quick because they're a part of it. And your glue stick, don't forget that. You need that. Okay, um, now I'm going to show you on this piece, um, I have drawn out this pattern in pencil. Okay, at first in pencil. And then you take your carbon paper. This is little thin sheets of this carbon paper. That's what you're going to use to trace your pattern onto another page because you need two copies of your pattern. Okay? The reason for this is one copy we're going to put down on the table and use to assemble our pieces on. That's going to be our template. That's what you put your actual glass pieces on. Okay? But you need another piece to make your glass pieces because the way you make the glass pieces is you take your carbon copy of that pattern and you're going to cut these pieces out. Cut along these lines and you're going to cut this out. And when it's done, you will have all of these individual pieces cut out and apart to where they will assemble on top of this other one neatly and in the right places and all. So that's why you want to cut really accurately. Now, this line is made with just a, the regular pen, but try to cut as exactly as you can. Um, you don't want to mess up in your cutting because that is going to influence what your pieces are shaped like. And we want our pieces to be shaped exactly like this. Okay? Precision is really important in stained glass. If you get off, like in your pattern, if you get off, it'll be off all the way through. So, you really want to pay attention to what you're doing. Okay? So, in the beginning, you have your cardstock. And on this piece, it's small, so I just have one piece. So, I took the piece that I drew. This is the one I drew. And I put the carbon paper. You put it with this hazy side up. Okay? The shiny side down. And then you put your blank page underneath that. Alright? That's how you're going to trace it. When you trace now on top of this pattern, you're going to trace over your pencil in your pen with this pen. Your colored pen. Okay? Because this is in pencil at first. When you first start out, you draw it in pencil because you're going to make mistakes. Okay? So, at first it's in pencil. And then, um, so just right now, pretend it's in pencil. Okay, so I have put my carbon paper here with the shady side on top and the shiny side on the bottom. And then on the bottom, I have a blank page. So then you get this and you trace over all of these lines. Okay, now I'm going to point you down here so you can see. Let me see if I can do that without turning you off. Okay. Okay, you're going to trace over all of these lines, and see this, you, when you trace over all of these little lines, it's going to come out through the carbon paper onto your back page. Now, I've already done it, so you see what it comes out like, okay? That is the copy that you cut up to make your pieces. This is your template, okay? Now, you'll see, you've seen that there's more information on this pattern. What I have written on here, I'm going to try to get it to where you can see, um, is there are numbers and there are lines with arrows. Okay, what that is, is you want to number each piece. Okay, because that's how you're going to tell where they go. So, you just start numbering and number each piece as far as it goes. Then you're also going to want to put on here the line, the direction that you want the glass to go in. Now, let me explain that. Okay. Glass, there's all different kinds of it. And a lot of it is directional. Meaning, there are ripples or texturing on one side of the glass that doesn't appear on the other side. If you're doing a piece with that type of glass, you want those ripples or designs, whatever they are, to be symmetrical on your piece. You don't want lines going this way up here and then going that way here and going this way here or that way. 
you want them to all go this way or this way or this way or that or all that way okay so for instance on this piece I want my lines to go on this piece of glass if I happen to use that type of glass I'm gonna want them all to go out this way and this way see and this one is this way and this way and these down here are that way and that way okay and then on these edges over here I want them to go up and down so up and down and up and down and up and down up and down okay and on these little little things here they're also going to be up and down up and down okay you just need to be consistent and I'm going to grab a piece of that glass and I'm going to show you what it looks like so you'll see what I'm talking about um, I have lots of pieces on it but this right here is a really good example okay you see this okay you notice the lines they go this way okay now that's on that side on this on one side it's rougher than the other one side is smoother okay you're going to want to cut on the smoother side not the rough side and we'll get into the, all of that in cutting but i just want to show you how the lines in this glass go this way okay so you want to maintain that directionality when you're cutting out your glass so on this pattern you indicate with a line which direction you want your glass to go in all right now this one we're going to use this pretty little thing here it goes in the center and i drew out the rest of it around it and so that catches us up pretty much in as far as pattern making is concerned um we will um talk about um the next time i'm going to have this the bottom page of this cut out because that's what you do you cut the bottom the pieces out of your bottom page the top page is your template okay so when we start next time i'm going to have this piece cut out so i'll have individual pieces of this paper all cut out that's what those pieces are what we're going to use to cut our glass out that's what's going to make our individual glass pieces we will then assemble them on our template and they should all fit together fairly nicely after they've been cut and then really nicely hopefully after they're ground because that makes a big difference okay um do you need a grinder yes you do do you need a good soldering iron yes you do um if you're really serious about doing this and you really want to have nice results um, I would recommend those things. Uh, a good um, soldering iron will cost you around 60 bucks. Weller is a good brand. Message me and I will discuss it with you, you know. Um, but I use a Griffet grinder. Um, I can't remember exactly how much it was. I think around $200. They're expensive. But I personally would not even try to do this without one. I would not. So, um, that's just how I feel about it. You know, this is just my opinion. You know, you can get one of those stones and, you know, grind till your heart's content. I guarantee you, you'll be grinding a long time. You're not going to make a lot of progress and you're going to cut the crap out of yourself. But, because I did it for a really long time. <laughs> I mean, I resisted having to spend the money on a grinder and I just grind and grind away at that thing. But there's an easier way, you know, um, if you're serious about it, think about it. But just for what this lesson encompasses, you need your ruler, you need your glue stick, you need your cardstock paper, and this carbon paper that you can get at like Walmart or Staples. Okay? And that's what you, and your pen, your special pen. Uh, or any pen. I'm just joking. Any pen, really. Um, I just like those because if you reuse your pattern, you know, does that make sense now? After you've traced over this, it's, it's going to have that colored ink. Like I did green. See, it's green. Now, if I want to use this pattern again, if I'm using a green pen, I won't know what part I've traced and what part I haven't. So, I use that colored pen and say the next time I want to use this pattern, I use blue ink. And that way, on that particular instance of using the pattern, I can tell what pieces I've drawn and over and what pieces I haven't. Okay? 
Hope that makes sense. All right, so that's all we have for this lesson. The next time we'll have those pieces cut out and we're gonna talk about cutting glass. And um, we'll just go from there. If you have any questions, please message me. If there's anything about pattern making or just starting out or anything else like that that you wanna know, please let me know and I'll definitely address it. Um, and if you want to visit with me about it, like I said, don't hesitate. I'm happy to do it. Okay. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining me. I appreciate you watching and, um, we'll, uh, pick it up again with the cutting part. Okay. You can do this. You can do this by yourself. You can teach yourself how to do this. I did. Um, I did with the help of videos. And then, like I said, I reached out and asked some people, you know, Hey, I'm having trouble with this. Can you help me? You know, um, but you can definitely do it without taking classes. Um, I, they're fine. They're great. You know, if you want to take a class, take one. Um, but you can do it without that if you want to. It takes time and persistence. And, you know, you just got to be able to do some trial and error, you know, because you're going to screw up. Um, but you're going to, you know, learn from that and, and everything else. And it's definitely possible. So don't give up. It's a lot of fun. You can make some beautiful things with it. So if you're struggling and you're just starting out, let me encourage you. Don't quit. You know, just just pick up and and uh, start again. And like I said, whatever stage you're having trouble with, think about the stages before that. Because I guarantee you, nine times out of ten, that's where your problem originated from. All right. Well, thank you guys for being here. I really appreciate you joining me and all the support for my channel. It's been wonderful. Uh, I've been working really hard on it, and I've been, um, I've had a lot of new people subscribe and everything, and it's really great. Thank you so much, and I love comments of any kind, of every kind. <laughs> I like good ones better, but <laughs> I'll take anything you got. <gasps> There's a tree frog. Oh my goodness, y'all come look. My cat is looking at him. Okay, I gotta get the phone turned around. Let's see where you... Oh, look at him. He's a, a rain frog. Oh, he's so pretty. And there's my cat down there. There's my cat trying to get him. Oh, my goodness. Isn't he cute? <laughs> I love critters. <laughs> and that's a cute one. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. Y'all hung in there. Um, we'll get started with the next one. All right. Have a great night.